tell you, man, this place has changed totally. Well, man, that is what happens when you don't come to school for a year, innit? <laughs> you know what? When we started coming here, I don't reckon there are as many Asian kids as there are now, you know? That, man, is because there is a general and massive fold increase in the number of brown people in the world, including our school. Why's that, man? Because everybody's been crossbreeding with each other, innit? <laughs> Not with us, they ain't, man. <laughs> Shut up and listen to what I'm telling you, right? There is a global, pan-continental, interracial Ras Malai festival going on. <laughs> Fact, right? In the year 2050, everyone on the earth will be brown because of interracial mixing. Yeah! Like crayons! <laughs> what? Yeah, no, 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 it's true. You remember when we were kids, yeah? And you get all the different crayons and then you mash them up all together, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. You mix the crayons and they come out brown. No, you eat the crayons and then they come out brown. <laughs> Just my chubbies, man. That is both wrong and disgusting. What I'm telling you is a beautiful thing. Where all the peoples of the world become a global tribe, <gasps> rejoicing in the glory of their newfound brownness. <laughs> so what you're saying is, right, that everyone's going to be Asian? That is what I'm saying. Oh, that's going to be a massive problem, man. What are you chatting about now? If everyone in the world is Asian, who can I smoke in front of without my mum finding out? <laughs> There's a small price to pay for racial harmony. But what about the cricket team? If everyone's Asian, who will we play? <laughs> there will be one big team consisting of everybody. And everyone in the world will take it in turns to be captain. Same as now, then. <laughs> yeah. But you've got to think about the massively positive aspects of Asia world, man. Uh, what's that, man? Well, for example, all shops will be permanently open. <laughs> and you won't have to spend ages waiting for a doctor, cos you'll probably be one. <laughs> fierce, man! Fierce! Yeah. But best of all, right, in Asia world, there will be no more wars. The whole planet will be ruled over in peace and tranquility by one all-powerful leader, the Richard Branson of Asia world. <laughs> Who's that, man? The Bartok Pickle family, innit? <laughs> so, do you have any trouble finding us? No, straight through on the A10 and then the B3118. <laughs> Late arrivals. That'll be the neighbours. <clears throat> oh, no blood. Yes, and they're very keen to blend in. Guys, this is Surgit. Sinjin! And Vanessa! <laughs> ah, I love the costumes. What made you choose them? Well, you did say that you were swingers. Four! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there'll be plenty of time for foursomes later on. <laughs> 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 Uh, I'm glad to hear it. Vanessa's been up all morning polishing my wood. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I wouldn't have had to if you didn't take such big divots with it. <laughs> <laughs> Divot. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, I suppose um, actually you'll be wanting to mingle and let your hair down. And... Well, actually, there's a couple of people here who I'm sure you're going to get along with really well. Oh, I shall see Dennis, your party animal. Ah, oh, I see your old friends. Ha ha ha, yes, yes. Uh, ish. Why don't you both make it? <laughs> don't mention it, old fruity. I see the baby's up a bit late. <laughs> oh, it's not a baby, Dennis. <laughs> oh, he knew that. <laughs> Great. I expect you'll find this whole scene very tame. Yes. I expect you get up to some pretty exotic things where you come from. What? You, you mean next door? <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, you'll probably teach us a lot of thing or two, eh? Well, we British, we're so sexually inhibited, don't you think? Mm. Uh, yes, we are. <laughs> I'm very inhibited, uh, sexually. <laughs> so is Dennis, aren't you, dear? Uh, thank you. Huh? <laughs> I was just saying, Dennis, how sexually backward you are. Oh, yes, completely useless. <laughs> uh, then again, there's nothing more British than a good orgy. I should cuckoo. <laughs> uh, yes, we're always having orgies at our place. <laughs> very naughty, very British. <laughs> well, our house is a cesspit of sexual degradation. <laughs> well, Sinton is frequently beside himself with sexual rage. 
<laughs> Don't you think you've had enough, dear? You wish. <laughs> if it's an orgy you're after, <laughs> we'll jump in any time. <laughs> I filled the bath with baked beans, huh? <laughs> Chain me to something painful. <laughs> <laughs> Spank me hard and call me Barbara. <laughs> How about a bit of wife swapping? Oh, swapping, swapping. Uh, a set of screwdrivers for Charlotte. <laughs> I knew our raging guests would spice up the party. Yeah. You have Asian guests? Oh, too hardy. Oh, dear. <laughs> we really should be going. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, hang on, what about the orgy? What? With the Asian people? Oh, yeah, you perverts. Yes, go on, we're leaving. Let's just leave it alone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I call this meeting of the Indian Broadcasting Corporation to order. I've invited you all down here today to introduce you to our new head of ethnic minority programming. Mr. John Britt. Hi. 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 John will be making sure that our representation of uh, English people will be tickety boo. <laughs> tickety boo. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And uh, I've got a few suggestions. Well, glad to hear that you've settled in all right. I call this meeting over. <laughs> hang, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. I haven't actually finished. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> now, I really do feel that the British community in India is totally underrepresented in the media here. Uh, now, hang on a minute. I have to disagree, right? You've got that weekly magazine program. Uh, what's it uh, called? Uh, Network West. Yeah, Network yeah. West. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I saw a brilliant item on last week's show, uh, the Morris Dancers of Ambala. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they mix Bhangra with traditional British brass band music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was on at 6 o'clock on a Sunday morning. Why do they get up so early? Huh? Walk the dog, I think. <laughs> Look, 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 look. In any case, we're not all Morris dancers, you know. That's just a stereotype. And why is it whenever we see a Brit on TV, he's either a tourist or a diplomat? And why can't we play doctors? Or, I don't know, shopkeepers? Oh, come on. I mean, when was the last time you saw a white doctor? <laughs> anyway, what about those two characters in the long running soap opera West Enders? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rita, the baby crying! <laughs> What about giving us a season of English films? Oh, Man, I've got to ask you, has anybody actually seen an English film? No. Eh? no. I mean, what are they all about, eh? Uh, I saw one once. Remains of the day. I couldn't believe it, right? Only two hours long, right? No dancing. <laughs> Well, they can't, can they? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. What about, what about an all-British comedy show? British comedy? Are they funny? <laughs> well, the accent's quite funny, no? Oh, 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 that's, that's right, that's right. You say anything in an English accent is bound to get a laugh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jolly quite right. <laughs> <laughs> We're tired of being marginalised and exploited and reduced to farcical stereotypes. OK? Now, we want change, and we want it now. OK. John. I think I have a proposal that will satisfy us all. Well, that's, that's great. I propose we cut your budget by 50%, lay off three quarters of your staff, and relocate the ethnic minority unit to just outside Jalandhar. <laughs> now, hang on a second. And we will also be extending your contract for life. That sounds perfect. Welcome to oh, India. Yeah. Have a part. <laughs> I've got to redefine my headgear. Oh, hey! Are you going to the Old Trafford on Saturday? Of course I'm going, man. I thought it was sold out. It's all right, man. My uncle Devinder's a travel agent. <laughs> he got me one of them sports packages. Includes coach from Southall to Manchester. <laughs> with a five-day stop over in Wolverhampton. <laughs> Does that include match tickets? Bloody Uncle Bastard. Unlucky geezer, unlucky! Now kiss my chuddies, man. 
I'll get a ticket at the way supporters end. The allocation is sold out. Man, you're talking about the white man's ticket allocation. There's still the Asian ticket allocation. What's that then? Five per game. Cool. <laughs> How come there's no more than five Asians at a football match, man? Ah, oh, the age-old question. The answer is simple. There are two reasons. First of all, ain't no way the Asians gonna eat the crap they serve at football grounds. Yeah. I mean, I can't see my dad eating no meat pie. <laughs> not until they start to define it more clearly. And maybe throwing some coriander in it. Good point, man. I mean, I can't see my Auntie Bimla getting her gold brand of cold jumbo sausage. <laughs> What's the second reason, man? But the, the second reason is this, right? If you go football every Saturday, who's going to look after the shop? Yeah! <laughs> I never saw that! So, who did you support in the World Cup? What are you all about now? I mean, did you support England or did you support France cos they won? <laughs> man, that is a stupid question. There was only one team to support. The team that represents the motherland of our culture, our language, our way of life. India weren't there, man. What India? I'm talking about Jamaica. Cha! Cha, man. Here's the reggae boy. Exactly my point, man. Plus, their kit is sponsored by his royal bagginess, the one and only Joseph Bloggs Esquire. <laughs> the master. Why hasn't India got a team? Cos Indians don't play football, man. What's that? Because of the ball, innit? What about it? Man, it's made of leather, right? <laughs> so your Hindu football team consists of 11 blokes trying not to touch the ball. <laughs> that is not a good tactic. What they should have is a pork ball for the Hindu team and give the beef ball to the Muslim team. Salala Maikam, boof, man! And for internationals, they could use a veggie ball. Yeah. Like, like, a, like a pumpkin or a big swede. Or, 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 or a coconut! Yeah, on me head. <laughs> I thought you was one of my stalkers trying to ask me out again. <laughs> In their dreams. As if. Anyway, what was you ringing me about? Oh, nothing. Just to let you know that I've been asked out on a date, innit? <laughs> Hello? Mina, you still there? Yes, yeah, sorry, I just fainted for a second. Oh. Now, you do remember we don't count men on the telly or in magazines, yeah? And they are not sending you secret messages through your hairdryer. <laughs> no, Nina, this time it's a real bloke, innit? I met him on the escalators in the metro centre when he caught his anorak toggle in my belly button ring. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we finally left casualty, right? <laughs> he asked me out. Well, I hope you told him in his dreams, buddy. Well, uh, um... You uh, did at least say as if, didn't ya? I mean, I would have done. Only, see, Michael's quite cute, right? Oh, man. Michael? So now you're switching from rotty to white bread, eh? <laughs> now, you listen to me, right? Well, well that's going to be a hot day, isn't it? Listen to his cooler shaker CD in the back of his Ford Cortina <laughs> while he drools about you're all over tan <laughs> in his dreams. Actually, Michael's half Indian, isn't it? Which half? <laughs> does it matter? Yeah, it does. If it's a top half, he'll think you're a slut if you kiss on a first date. And if it's a bottom half, don't bother kissing him because he'll be useless at anything else. <laughs> As if. Well, I did kiss him, so there. And it was quite nice too. And I didn't have any of them guilty hallucinations after neither. Oh, yeah, them ones where your grandparents appear at the end of the bed waving bloody swords and shouting, die in agony, dung sucking whore of Jolanda. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, that's just me then. <laughs> Look, Mina, you don't want me to go out with him, do you? If you 
you want to betray the sisterhood that is up to you, Bina? Well, so what shall I tell his best friend then who wants to get out with you? <laughs> Still there? Hey? Eh? Hurry up or we'll be late! And as if! Nazreen Ishak. A happy-go-lucky teenager who, like so many young Asian girls, is oppressed by traditionalist parents who treat her like a piece of property. This week on Expose, I expose these parents. <laughs> Hello, excuse me, Mr Ishak. Yes? Bob Nonk, Expose. Where is your daughter Nazreen at the moment? Uh, she's in her room. Right, why? Uh, she's doing her homework. I see. So she's shut up in her room. What? Is the door locked? Uh, what do you mean? Do you lock her in her room until she's finished? No. And if she fails to get straight A's in her exams, what then? What then? I assume you'll administer a severe beating. <laughs> no. Are you trying to tell me that you don't beat your daughter? That you don't treat her like a slave? That you don't keep her locked in the cellar with only a bucket for a toilet? Darling, what's happening? Who are these people? Ah, Mrs Ishak. When your daughter wants to go out with her friends like a normal Western girl, how do you stop her? Well, she quite likes going out with her friends. In fact, she's going to cinema tonight. And what if your daughter were to meet someone at this cinema? What if she then wanted to marry this person? Is it not the case that you would then lock her in the cellar again until she agreed not to marry this poor man whose only crime was to fall in love with a member of your family? We don't have a cellar. <laughs> Are you going to force her to marry her unborn tractor-driving cousin from Pakistan with only the one eye but 12 enormous fingers? It's been nice talking to you, but we have to go. Do you tie her up with your husband's belt? We have to go inside. Would you? Now, for us, please. Look, just go away, you stupid man. Oh, go on. The viewers will love it. The viewers? Is this going to be on television? <laughs> Okay, um, I'll just go get her. <laughs> Come on, Beta, let's clear these comic books away. Oh, don't move that. That's my Superman collection. I'm trying to put it in order. But you've got so many. Do you need this many comics? <clears throat> Superman's my favourite superhero. Ah, well, I can understand that. He's so brave, so strong. So Indian. <laughs> Superman Indian. No! Ah, ah, come on, you've seen the film. He runs faster than a speeding train. There's only one country where you can run faster than the train. <laughs> but, 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 Dad! What about Clark Kent? Huh, Clark Kent? Uh, national health glasses. Bad haircut. Go to Calcutta, you see millions of civil servants dressed exactly the same. No, Dad! Superman comes from Krypton. Kerala! Think about it, yaar. He's got two jobs. Indian. Never takes a day off work. Indian. And how does he get around? Cheap flights. I don't believe you. Not just Superman. Batman, Spider-Man, Incredible Hulk, all top superheroes come from India. Rubbish. Not rubbish. You look at the ancient Hindu texts. They're full of superheroes. There's Holy Man, Hanuman, <laughs> Catman do. Catman do. OK, forget that one. But also Mongoose Man, Bribery Man, Latrine Boy. <laughs> okay, okay, chup, 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 chup. Hey, don't be stupid. Put, put the blanket straight. Put the blanket straight. Jaldi karo. Right, now, listen, listen, listen. It's a beautiful day. The birds are singing. We have all come here to relax. Now, can we please, please get through this day without any raised voices, any noises, or any hungama? Okay? Uh, okay, right now. Who wants uh, cheesecake? Uh, me, please, yeah. darling. Uh, Could we have the spoons, please, dear? Uh huh. Oh. What is it? We forgot the spoons. <laughs> They're only spoons. I knew this day would be a disaster. <laughs> Here's a curse. We will all starve to death. <laughs> We can eat the cheesecake with our hands. Uh, 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 darling, you have a bit of cheesecake on your lip. Oh, you wear the wet wipes? 
You don't have them? I thought you had them. Oh! <laughs> if not wiped off, the cheesecake will turn to poison and I will be a widow. <laughs> and, and, and we'll be orphans. Look, look. I take this tissue, put a bit of mineral water on it. Hey, presto, wet wipe. No fuss, no bother. Oh, oh. Sorry, Daddy. Sorry, right. Daddy. Now, I'm going to have a jam sandwich. What's that noise? That's only a bee. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> There's a plague! Oh, no, the plague of bees will kill us all. Bee! Bee! There's a plague of bee! <laughs> Cover me with jam so it will take me further. <laughs> what happened? The demonic bee is dead. Yes. Now can we please eat? But how did you kill it? With this aerosol. Oh, oh my God! If you marry this man, he would carry out his evil plot to wipe out mankind with a cloud of toxic gas and a cheesecake. <laughs> Everybody behind me, I'll absorb the fatal rays. Cover <laughs> me in jam anyway. Under the armor. 